What's up everyone? I am back with another cinematography breakdown of a Super 16 film project that I recently got to shoot and very excited to share with everyone. Shooting on film has been something I've been wanting to do for multiple years and I am so stoked to be sharing this project with everyone, sharing some BTS, thoughts behind shooting on film, and just gonna do a quick lighting cinematography breakdown of how this project came about. So this video ended up being a performance video for an artist named Gene Moore and he was basically just wanting to shoot on a psych wall, clean, black and white. Initially, I was thinking of shooting it on a digital camera just because of budget and I just had been thinking about shooting on film and I just thought if we're gonna shoot on a psych wall it's gonna be too clean you know everyone does performance videos on psych walls um, but what if we shot it on film add some grittiness add some texture um, creamy tones you know and uh, he ended up being stoked about shooting on film but unfortunately because of budget we literally had only eight takes to get this whole performance video done so I had to come up up strategically with the right angles and right camera movements placement of lights and all those things to make sure that we really get it in those eight takes because I can't mess around it's not a digital camera I don't have unlimited you know card space to shoot with um, which made it a good you know restraint if this is your first time watching any of these random cinematography breakdowns that you may have clicked on, my name is Mika Matinazad. I'm a cinematographer, filmmaker, steady cam operator, and I've been doing this for over the past five years, running a small six-figure production company and just looking to pass on some of the knowledge and everything to all the new filmmakers out there that are looking to grow their skill sets and become better storytellers. So I just wanted to say thanks for clicking on this. Okay, cool. Before I go into any of the light or camera breakdowns I wanted to talk about how this gig came about just because it's always interesting hearing about how everyone else gets these opportunities to shoot you know things on film or massive commercials and music videos but this actually came about through a friend who's a creative director at a, at a label here in Nashville and he had just asked me to pitch a treatment and things ended up working out the artist ended up liking it I pitched the idea of shooting on film maybe that was the factor that helped me win the project once that was approved you know I think we had about a five to seven K budget I don't exactly remember I will double check on that okay so budget was actually 8k but funny enough with having to rent the complete camera package film camera package getting the accessories you need which is like you need the proper lens, you need a Teradek, you need someone to be pulling focus for it. You need a loader, a film loader, someone who specializes in, and understands how to load um, this specific type of camera that we shot with. And just renting the space all kind of came about 8K with film stock and development, which were pretty pretty uh, high costs for this project. Like I said before, we we're trying to go from a digital look to a film look, which meant I only had eight takes to get this thing down. The film stock that we chose was the Kodak 250D, just because we were already lighting for uh, daylight. Even though it was gonna be in black and white, the, the final product was, I just wanted to shoot it with color just to see what that even looks like. I would like to add, when I took this project on, I called up my friend, Jason Hassel, He's an incredible cinematographer and has had a lot of experience loading film So I trusted him to come and load film for this project and he just did an amazing job So in regards to my approach for lighting this film project I knew I wanted the artist to have a soft wrap around their face and overall just have a soft tone low contrast so my friend Kevin Cecil amazing gaffer he came and put his lights up helped me figure out what stops to work with in terms of skin tones and all those things and something that I had learned from one of Lewis Potts's videos with when it comes to shooting Super 16 it's nice to expose a stop over because what you can do in post is bring your highlights down bring your exposure down 
that way you get a little bit of that halation, halation, halation that you get from shooting, you know, overexposed. It's better to overexpose on film than to underexpose because in that case, if it's underexposed, you're going to start getting grain and noise in your film that doesn't always turn out to be the best look. So all that to say for our key light, we had, I think, a 600C with, you know, your typical aperture softbox, uh, full grid going through, I think it was a quarter grid, again, another six by six, just to add that another stop of um, soft wrap around. And then on the other side of the key light, I had another, I think it was another 600 that was kind of like highlighting the side a little bit. So it was like a little bit brighter and then softer wrap in the front. And then had another light panel um, just filling in the psych wall behind the artist. And on the other side, we had a 300D light that was just kind of providing a little bit of an edge just to further separate the person from the background. So basically we were lighting for T4 on the lens and my light meter, but I was actually shooting it at 2.8. The other thing that you have to keep in mind when it comes to shooting film is that you don't have any audio rolling. So I had to create this um, slate on DaVinci Resolve with the time code so I can know what part of the song we're in, if we're rolling in the middle or trying to get the last chorus or the last verse. So the camera that we chose for this project was the Aton um, Minima Super 16 camera that comes with these little 200 feet mags um, that you have to get specific film stock for um, either from Kodak or from a local you got to check in with your local film houses or rental houses that sometimes may be carrying them generally if you're shooting super 16 film typically on a airy sr3 camera those come in 400 foot mags which is pretty standard and it's a lot more difficult to find 200 foot mags and sometimes more pricier. I would say in terms of my experience with shooting on the Minima, um, we had quite a few bumps along the day that we just didn't see coming and that's something that you should definitely budget for when it comes to shooting film. You want to have extra mags laying around because your loader would preferably have those preloaded either before the shoot or on the day of because taking the original mag off and putting a new one on, it's gonna take some time. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes to just take it off, put a new one in, and you gotta account for all these little breaks you have between takes. So on a 200 foot mag, you're getting about five minutes worth of film. Five minutes and I think it's like 20 seconds or 30 seconds. The song is three minutes long, so I'm really getting one take and 80% of the second take. So you wanna keep in mind that you're working with one take at a time or two takes at most at a time when it comes to the song. And you have to be prepared for, you know, when you roll two takes in less than 10 minutes, you gotta be ready to get that next roll in. And we were just having trouble loading these mags in and being ready. The artist was waiting around for like 15 or 20 minutes and it was just terrible. <laughs> With the camera movement, I had a Cineped that uh, I use as a slider. Uh, I really prefer using the Cineped over a Dana Dolly because I just have yet to find the perfect Dana Dolly that has no bumps or shakes when you're doing a slider move. It was a perfect tool for this project because I could take it off the tripod, put it on the ground, get a different angle. In terms of lensing this camera, there's an 8-64 to Canon lens that is your typical Super 16 uh, lens that you use for you know a shoot like this and I just love how that lens looks. And when you're able to do a zoom on a film camera, it just looks like butter. It looks so good. When you're shooting on a film camera that has like an SDI out, I would definitely encourage having some kind of ninja monitor that can record the, the feed. That way you can reference back once um, you've sent off the film or before you edit, or if you want to show the artist on set, you know, you can show the pre-recorded footage on the monitor. Even though it looks a little bit different, it still looks amazing and looks super cool. And they always get very excited because they can just feel what the final look is going to look like. If you're interested in learning more about becoming a cinematographer, figuring out the business side, negotiating your rate, freelance topics, tax topics, I have a newsletter 
link down below, sign up, free stuff. Super happy to connect with you, but thanks for checking this video out. Thank you.